In one of my first ever job experiences, my boss said that I look like a slacker. In this video, I'm going to share with you how that one little offhand comment changed my life forever, and I'm going to show you how you can benefit from the embarrassing lesson that I learned and my years-long journey to figure out how to stop looking like a slacker and sabotaging my chances at success in business and in life in general. I graduated from college in 2010 with a bachelor's degree in business economics and I learned the hard way that college really does not prepare you for adult life. It does not prepare you to make money in the real world. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on that, check out this video. But anyway, I graduated, I could not find a job that paid. So the best thing that I could do is I, I worked for a friend of my dad's. I worked for free one day a week as basically his secretary. Right? I was kind of in a desperate position and at least I was getting experience doing that. Well, uh, that friend of my dad's, he, he told my dad one day that, that I did good work, but he was surprised that I did good work because, as he said, I looked like a slacker. And, you know, I was none too happy to hear that, of course, but I, I thought about it and I realized that if I look like a slacker, Nobody wants to hire me. Nobody wants to do business with me, right? Nobody wants to do business with a slacker. So I recognized that this was a huge problem. And I started trying to figure out what it was about me that made me look like a slacker so I could fix the problem. If you want to be successful in work or in business or just about anything in life, you need people to perceive you well. So I needed to figure out why I was being perceived as a slacker. And it didn't really take me very long to figure out that the problem was my posture. I stood with slumped shoulders, with my head bowed forward, with, uh, you know, hands in the pockets. I didn't really think about this stuff. You know, this is just something that had been conditioned into me for a long time. And I know some nerd is gonna jump in the comments and say, oh, it's because you have long hair and you have a beard. Well, I didn't have long hair and I didn't have a beard at that time. I was perfectly clean shaven, I had a nice haircut, and I dressed nicely, so I promise you that was not the problem. So I figured out that posture was my problem, and I thought, okay, well, yeah, I'll just stand up a little straighter and, and keep my head up, and that'll solve the problem, but uh, it wasn't really so easy, because I had been using bad posture, I'd been sitting constantly for years and years and years, and it had been ingrained into my physiology. My body was used to a bad posture, so standing or sitting with good posture was uh, was difficult at best and completely exhausting because my body was so used to the poor posture. So I tried to figure out how to fix it and I tried a lot of stuff. You know, I tried going to chiropractors and getting adjusted. And you know, I like getting getting the spine adjusted. You know, it makes me stand straight for maybe 15 minutes but then I would go back to the normal slumped position, you know. I couldn't, I couldn't hold it. I couldn't keep it that way. It was not uh, sustainable. So I did a little bit more research, and I figured out that the reason that the chiropractic adjustments just weren't sticking was that the problem was in the muscles. I had tight groups of muscles that were pulling my body into contorted positions. And so every time I get an adjustment, it would straighten out my back, but then my muscles would just pull it back into the same old position, so it wasn't working. So when I recognized that the muscles were the problem, I tried doing massage along with the chiropractic work. I got deep tissue massage, and so I signed up for a program with the chiropractor where they would do the chiropractic adjustments and the massage for, for I think it was three days a week for several months. I paid three or four thousand dollars for this program, and they would do the massage, but they would only massage the part that was sore. You know, my back was sore from all the hunching over. And they would only, they would only massage my back, or they would only massage my neck. And, you know, I, I told them that the problem was lower down, you know. And I'll get into this a little bit later in the video. But I told them that the problem was, was lower down. That's what I figured out from my research, that my, my legs, my hip flexors were tight. And so that was causing the back pain. But they said, oh, the insurance company only allows us to to massage the area that hurts right I was paying three or four thousand dollars out of pocket for this but they couldn't they couldn't actually fix the problem because the insurance company didn't approve which is something that I found a lot by the way if you're if you're in the US if the, the mainstream insurance companies cover it then it's doesn't really do you much good and if it doesn't if it does do you much good 
then the insurance companies won't cover it. Or if you're in a if you're in a, a country with a government healthcare system, it's the same with the government healthcare system, right? If it's actually addressing the problem, then the healthcare system, the insurance system, doesn't cover it. And probably there's some crazy conspiracy theories I could get into about that, but I'm not going to do that on this video. I really don't know why that is, but it seems to me that everything useful <laughs> is not covered. So you got to figure it out on your own. Anyway, my problem was that I had a, a series of muscular imbalances because I sat all the time. And in fact, most people in the, in the modern world spend more than half of their waking lives sitting. And it's absolutely horrible for the posture. It's horrible for your health, horrible for your spine. Uh, it does a lot. Of damage it, it creates a predictable set of muscle imbalances when you're sitting all the time your hip flexors are are short and they get used to that short position and then when you go to stand up they don't really lengthen all the way let me try to demonstrate for you what I mean by that so if I go over here you can see me a little better um, your hip flexors are the muscles that pull your thighs up like this towards your body so when you're sitting your hip flexors are in this position. Your hip flexors are flexed, they're short. They're in the shortened position. And if you sit there for long enough, then your hip flexors get used to that position. They get used to being in the short position and they get stuck there. They get stuck in the short position such that when, you, when you're, you're sitting down all, all day and then when you go to stand up, it, to, they don't want to lengthen all the way. You know, they have to be long when you're standing, but they don't want to lengthen, so it ends up pushing your pelvis forward like this, right? And you can't go around walking around all day like this, right? Bent forward, so your lower back has to compensate, so your lower back goes back like this, right? And then I'm looking up at the sky now, so I can't really walk around like this all day either, so then my, my uh, neck has to bend forward and my upper back has to bend forward like this, so they're way out ahead. So it's basically like a very, um, a very exaggerated S shape that your body learns to adopt because you're sitting all the time and it starts all with those tight hip flexors. If you're enjoying this video, if you find this content helpful, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up icon, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button, which means that all of the awesome content that I have lined up for the f near future, you are going to be the first to get it. And also, if you know anybody that would be helped by this video, if you know anybody whose lives would be improved by watching this video, please go ahead and share it with them. Share it on your social media, share it on your email, whatever it is, I would appreciate it and I'm sure that your friends will too. So sitting all the time creates a very predictable sort of bad posture. You know, I've been working out for as long as I can remember, since I was a teenager, I've always been in pretty good shape. And I remember uh, once a friend told me, or a friend said about me that it looks like I have a beer belly with abs on top. And it's part of that, that seated posture. It's like I had, you know, the, with the, the hips tilted forward, and the back curved so much, I was sticking my belly out. Even though I didn't have a fat belly, it looked like it because I was sticking it out so much. So how to fix this is a pretty broad topic, so I'm not going to go over everything, but I will give you some basics to get you started. Um, there are a predictable set of muscle imbalances, like I said. You have, if you sit all the time, you get tight hip flexors, you have weak glutes, that's your butt muscles, you have a uh, tight, tight lower back muscles, right? The lower back is, is curved like this. You have weak lower abdominal muscles, and those are not the muscles that you work out with crunches, by the way. They're under those abdominal muscles. You work those out differently. Um, you have, uh, your, your head is tilted forward, right? So you have a, a weak um, upper back muscles, and usually you have tight, uh, chest muscles too. So, and especially if you're working at a keyboard and your your hands are forward like this all the time, your chest is your chest is always flexed. And then if you're looking down at your cell phone all the time, that makes it worse on your neck and your upper in your upper back. So, those are the predictable set of muscle imbalances that you get if you sit all the time. Now, the source of those is mostly in the hip flexors. Your it, your pelvis, your pelvis is tilted forward and the reason for that is that your hip flexors are too tight and your butt is too weak. So I would recommend is the low hanging fruit, the easiest things to deal with in this is to 
work on stretching your hip flexors and work on strengthening your glutes. So um, what I like to do, first of all, is quit causing the problem to get worse. So if you can, get a standing desk. Don't sit all the time. If you're at the TV, don't sit all the time. Um, you know, just try to avoid sitting as much as you possibly can in your life. When you have to sit, set a reminder for yourself to stand up. So every 15 minutes or so, set a reminder. You know, you can get a little app on your, on your computer or on your phone. It'll remind you every 15 minutes when you're at the office or whatever to just stand up and stretch a little bit. It's not too hard to do and it will mitigate the worst of the effects of sitting. And then from there, you want to stretch your hip flexors. So every time you stand up when you're, when you're at work or just like throughout the day, uh, do this, do, I don't know if you can see me there. Um, put, your, put one leg back, one leg forward, and then feel the stretch at the front of the hip here. That's your hip flexor, the, the, just the top of the thigh to the front of the hip. And then switch legs, do it on the other leg. Now, if you want to make it even more effective, you can do some massage in there. Figure out which muscles are tight, and then poke your fingers in there. Uh, be a little careful that you're not beating up your internal organs. And then up the, the front of the thigh there. Once doing that massage, do it in such a way that it hurts a little bit, but you know it's not unbearable. Do that, uh, and that, that will help to loosen up the muscles. So do that and alternate with stretching. And then also you want to uh, strengthen the glutes. You want to strengthen the muscles in your butt. So um, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is just to walk up stairs. And when you walk up the stairs, really feel the squeeze in your butt every time you take a step. And that will strengthen your glutes, which when your glutes are strong, they will hold tighter, which will open up your hip flexors throughout the day. Now, if you want to explore this further, which I think you absolutely should, because if you sit a lot, if you have bad posture, this is absolutely affecting your life and it's only going to get worse as you get older. So I absolutely recommend that you find more info about this. The first resource that I would recommend is a book called Desk Bound by Kelly Sterrett, who is a physiotherapist who has done a lot of research on the way that sitting affects people and how to mitigate it. So it will show you every little bit of the muscular chain that evolves from sitting all the time and it will show you a whole bunch of exercises that you can do to make it better. An even better option if you want somebody to just handle it all for you is to find a neurosomatic therapy practitioner. Now neurosomatic therapy is not something that's extremely well known at this point in time and probably it won't be covered by your insurance carrier or your government because it actually makes you healthy and your government and insurance carrier are not particularly interested in that in my experience but what they do is they figure out all of your postural imbalances and they address them they they look at your body as a whole you know my problem with that chiropractor and massage person before was that they, they only look at the body at parts. In fact, that's how most of medical, the medical profession works. It's reductionist. It's like the, the dentist looks at your teeth and the ophthalmologist looks at your eyes and the neurologist looks at your brain and everything is compartmentalized and nobody recognizes that the body is a whole, that every part affects the other. Well, they look at your, well, they look at your, your body as a whole. And they say, okay, well, if you, have a, if you have a sore neck, maybe it's because your, the posture in your back is bad. And maybe the posture in your back is bad because the posture in your hips are bad. And the posture in your hips is bad because the posture in your legs is bad, they, they, etc. They teach you, uh, they, they take it rather, all the way from the beginning of the chain and they fix the problem, they fix the cause, rather than just putting a band-aid over the symptom. So, now, what they do more specifically is that they will measure everything, like they measure the angle of your, of your hips, uh, they, they, your pelvis, for example, and then they'll measure the, I don't, I don't know, it's so complicated, it takes so many measurements, but they'll, they'll measure like how far in front of your uh, shoulder, shoulder bone is your ear. And they figure out, compared to what the ideal human body is, they figure out where your body is and then they address the problems one by one through targeted massage. 
It's excellent. I've done it for months and I highly recommend it. So if you can find a neurosomatic therapy practitioner, absolutely do it. I want to hear from you. Have you ever had the experience of just meeting someone for the first time and they immediately write you off without knowing anything about you? They just, they just don't take you seriously at all. Write in the comments if you've ever had that experience and tell me why you think that was. Do you think that maybe it had something to do with your body language or your posture or something about the way that you present yourself? If you enjoyed this video, you'll also want to check out this video all about how fear will ruin your chances of success and how to overcome that fear. The one easiest technique that I've found to overcome fear. So check out this video now.